Meeting to order. This is the convening of the Cottonwood Mayor and City Council of the City of Cottonwood for presentations of proclamations, awards, and introduction of new employees to be held at 5.30 p.m. at the Council Chambers Building. And I'm joined uh, by Vice Mayor Harugi, the full council, Council Member uh, Linda Norman, Councilwoman uh, Karen Pfeiffer, Council Member Althaus, Council Member Allen, and uh, Council Member uh, Henry. Thanks everyone for being here. So first item is presentation of a plaque of appreciation to Diane Jones for her support of Shop with the Cop. So if I could call Chief Gazelle and Diane Jones up. Thank you, Mayor. Well, this has been kind of a comedy of errors. This last time we tried to give the, the mayor this plaque, we couldn't get the mayor here. Today we have the mayor here, but we can't get the plaque here. <laughs> so uh, we're going to give her a virtual plaque tonight, and we will get you the plaque. Diane, I promise you that. Uh, I'll get to see you all over the next day. <laughs> But we wanted to take a second, if you're not familiar with Shop with a Cop, it's a phenomenal event that's done nationwide, that uh, law enforcement uh, takes special um, care in promoting the program, which really helps under pro um, underprivileged children in our community. But this year of note was a record year for donations where people gave from their own pockets and supported the program. We have so much money in the bank that these donations will be carried forth in the city of Cottonwood and the Verde Valley for the next five years. So we're very, very pleased to see the community support for such a great program. And among those supporters, um, former Mayor Diane Jones has supported this program for the last nine to 10 years, from what I'm told. Both with her presence, she is the, or was the omnipresent local elected official. Um, and during the last year I was here, she was virtually everywhere I was. And a couple of times I got worried because she looked like she was at one point sleeping while she was standing up. She was so tired. But she, she, tire, she is the, uh, the e example of a tireless public servant, and we'd like to recognize you for your tireless efforts in this regard and supporting such a phenomenal program which has benefited so many kids and improved so many lives. So thank you very much. Diane Jones, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> Have I ever been at a loss for words? <laughs> I would just like to say thank you to the Cottonwood Police Department for all that you do and to Officer Colt, who um, does so much for the community. And if anybody really should be getting an award, it should be Officer Colt, because she's everywhere. Everywhere that the police department is planning an extracurricular activity, she seems to always be there leading it up, um, working regionally to bring all of the police forces, the marshals, the sheriffs together to benefit children. So I would just like to thank the chief and the Cottonwood Police Department for all you do. All right, item two, awards. So the first award goes out to, uh, this is the employee of the quarter award for the fourth quarter, Captain Larry Dawson from the fire department. So I'd like to go ahead and call up uh, Chief Kirkendall. Mayor, Council, it's my privilege tonight to uh, present to you the co-winner of the fourth quarter uh, 2016 employee of the quarter, Captain Larry Dawson. Larry coordinated the team for the city of Cottonwood at the recent Kids Against Hunger packaging event. Uh, Larry put in a lot of extra time contacting people from the city, his numerous city employees, and putting together city teams and came up with how many teams did you end up with, Larry? Two and a half teams to put together meals, uh, and uh, that contributed to the overall success of the event with over 280,000 meals being packaged in that time frame on that Saturday. Uh, the impact of the city certainly is twofold. One is it uh, increased the camaraderie among city employees, people getting to know one another more and working with one another uh, outside of the normal work day. 
but also very much demonstrated to the community uh, our commitment as city employees to our community as a whole. Care to say a few words, Mr. Dawson? Um, this is my uh, third year putting together, being in charge of putting together the program and getting the teams together. Um, it's getting bigger every year, and I enjoy helping out Kids Against Hunger. Thank you. Vice Mayor Ruben Hodgey will present you with your plaque and check. So next award goes out to Amanda Wilbur from the Human Resources Department. And I'm not sure who, uh, Iris Dober, please come on up. Um, Amanda's an amazing worker. She's an amazing employee. She's an amazing co-worker. Uh, I think everybody in the city loves working with her. So it's really great to be able to honor her in this way. But she took it upon herself to receive this honor, very, very honestly. She applied to two different organizations to receive some funding to attend a week-long um, conference or institute, it's called, for risk management. And we not only handle human resources, we handle risk management probably about half and half. Um, so it was wonderful that she could go to this training again this year, and almost everything was paid for by these two uh, stipends that she got, that she applied for. So um, Amanda, come on up. We'd like to present you with your... really grateful that I was able to attend the training because it was really great training and I think that I could really apply a lot of what I learned there to my job here which benefits the city so thank you okay last but not least we have an award for employees yielding effective safety which is the EYES program here in Cottonwood. So uh, we'd like to have uh, Ray Kleiss receive the award, and I believe uh, Bruce Morrow, is he in? No? Aha, hiding from us. Come on up, Bruce, Mr. Morrow, and uh, introduce your employee, please. I'd like to introduce uh, Ray Kleiss. He's one of our ADA paratransit drivers. Uh, he gets out and about quite a bit. He's pretty much uh, on every street and pretty much every alley and byway in Cottonwood, so he gets to see a lot of things that are right in Cottonwood, and uh, he gets to see some of the things that are wrong in Cottonwood. So he gets to note them down, and, and uh, I guess that's why he gets the award. So, uh, Ray? Mayor, Council, and those present, uh, I just want to thank Cottonwood for the, uh, the opportunity to serve. and. Uh, meet the needs of transportation, and I want to thank everyone in advance for their support of CAT. Thank you. Oh, here we are. Hey, Diane Jones, come on back up. Commander McCooch saved the day here with the, uh, oh, okay. so we're going to back up a All second right. and, and do a nice photo op here with uh, a really wonderful plaque for you. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the <laughs> okay, well that concludes the, uh, the pre-meeting of the City Council, so at 6 o'clock we'll start our regular meeting.
the City Council of the City of Cottonwood to be held January 3rd, 2017. Uh, Deputy Clerk, please take the roll. Uh, Councilmember Al Althouse. Present. Councilmember Norman. Here. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Here. Councilmember Allen. Here. Councilmember Henry. Here. Vice Mayor Howergy. Here. And Mayor Olinsky. Here. Thank you. Uh, please stand up and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just a quick reminder, folks, to please uh, turn your phones to silent for the meeting. Okay, item four is a brief summary of current events by the mayor, city council, and or city manager. So, uh, council, do you have anything to report on what you've done the last couple of weeks or what you've got coming up? I do. Please. <laughs> the Modified Motorcycle Association of Verde Valley held our annual motorcycle run that's held every year on January 1st. So this year it was Sunday, a very rainy day. Um, but we were able to raise $2,000 for the Verde Valley Military Service Park. So I'm very proud of my motorcycle friends that braved the rain and those that made donations um, to support our military service park. Very good, thank you. Good work. Anyone else? Holiday busy, that's yeah. it. Okay, I'll, I'll report uh, just briefly here that um, this Thursday, January 5th, I'll be interviewing uh, Fred Piper as part of the Inside Cottonwood series that I'm doing. So Fred Piper is going to uh, join me in the studio and, and yell at me for half an hour. It should, <laughs> should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward so to it. So that's senior Fred Piper then. That's correct, yeah. No, he's a great uh, colorful character and he agreed to uh, let me interview him. So that should be a really good one. Um, and then tomorrow morning I'm going to be attending the Board of Supervisors meeting over in Prescott to... They've got some discretionary funding through CDBG, um, uh, the Community Development Block Grant funds that uh, we may be able to, I'm gonna beg for the money essentially to use it to fill, fill the uh, gap on our Civic Center funding. As I don't know if council's aware or not, but we're about $270,000 shy on being able to do the full project that we'd like over on the Civic Center. So I'm gonna ask for that money from the Board of Supervisors. So I wish me luck. Um, and also this coming Monday, um, January 9th, there's a, the Homeless Coalition is meeting at the Catholic Charities to discuss their point in time count, which is an important um, uh, count that they do where they uh, essentially ca count the homeless folks we have living in the area, and this is what helps uh, secure federal funding. So I'll be attending that meeting. It starts at 11 a.m. Uh, at the Catholic Charities building. So that's all that I have. Oh, one, one other last thing. I do have a mayoral newsletter. Uh, which I send out once a month. Uh, the last one went out um, on the 1st. So um, if anyone would like to be receiving that newsletter, they can email me. Uh, you can find my email address on the city website, of course, and uh, ask to be added to that newsletter. And if you're on Facebook at all, um, you, can, you can get on a link there. I, I'm not real good at Facebook, obviously, but there's a way where you can subscribe on my Facebook page to be added to that newsletter. So I'd encourage folks to do that. And that's all I have. Next item, item five, is call to the public. This portion of the agenda is set aside uh, for the public to address the council regarding an item that is not on the agenda for discussion. However, the council cannot engage in discussion regarding any item that is not officially listed on the agenda. So is there anyone in the public tonight that would like to speak during call to the public? Okay. Okay, so moving on. Item Six is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of December 6th and the work session of December 10th and the regular meeting of December 20th. You moved to approve the minutes? Okay. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I do have one correction on the minutes for December 6th. Mm -hmm. At the bottom of page six is the resolution for Bill Wade to be added to the airport commission. And then on the top of page seven is the resolution for Jim Money but it doesn't say Jim Money. it says Bill Wade. Both of them say Bill Wade. Oh, I see, okay. Good, <coughs> good catch, yeah. So we'll, we'll make those corrections then, yeah, okay. Okay, so we have a motion and? And I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay, so the minutes are approved. 
Okay, moving on, item seven is the consent agenda. We have four items on the consent agenda. Um, a new liquor license application submitted by Anthony J. Ontiveros, applicant for Crazy Tony's Old Town Market, located at 802 North Main Street, item two. A special event liquor license application submitted by Beth Kennedy, applicant for the Verde Valley Fair Association for events scheduled January 27, 2017. September 23rd, 2017, September 30th, 2017, at the Verde Valley Fairgrounds located at uh, 1110 East Cherry Street. Uh, item three is a cooperative purchase agreement with Norwood <coughs> Equipment through the National Joint Powers Alliance Cooperate, Cooperative for the purchase of a street sweeper. Item four, approving the purchase of two Chevrolet Tahoe law enforcement vehicles <coughs> from Midway Chevrolet and upfitting services from Arizona Emergency Products, utilizing Arizona State contract uh, and the Yavapai County contract. So those are the four items on the consent agenda. These items are considered to be routine, non-controversial by the council and will be approved by one motion. So unless there's anyone in the public tonight that would like to have one of these items pooled or if there's a council member that would like to have an item pooled. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda is approved. <clears throat> okay, uh, item eight, new business. <clears throat> First item under new business is a contract with Pine View Consulting, LLC, um, for the Riverfront Water Reclamation Facility Injection Well Design and Modification of the Existing Point of Compliance Well. So I'm going to call forward Mr. Biggs. Please introduce yourself. We all know who you are, but members of the public may not. So. My name is Roger Biggs. I'm the utility manager. Uh, good evening, Council. Mayor, Council. Uh, tonight I ask for approval of a cost proposal and possible award of a contract for engineering design of injection well and modifications to a point of compliance well at the Riverfront Wastewater Treatment Plant project. This is an amount not to exceed $142,000. Approval of this contract authorizes Pine View Consulting and three subcontractors to complete the necessary engineering design for the injection well and its associated infrastructure before the construction of the injection well can be initiated and completed. Approval of this contract also, also authorizes Pine View Consulting to assist the city in any and all efforts for obtaining an aquifer protection permit, an APP, which is required by the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, this injection well is part of the uh, effluent disposal system for the riverfront project and uh, a rather critical component for the completion of the project. Any questions from council? Any questions, council? I do. Sure. This item was, was it originally budgeted or anticipated that we were going to have to replace this item yes, in the near future? Yes, back in January 2015 when I came before council with a, with a list of costs, this was one of the items that was not on the GMP for the contractor. Right. It was a separate standalone item. Okay. So, um, but it yes, was anticipated. It, it is budgeted. Okay. So, regarding these injection wells, how many are we going to need for this facility? Is this... This just one particular project, this is the first. There, there may be up to three of them down in future phases. Okay. But this is the first one for this project. There is a, also a, a companion well, the, the point of compliance well, which is already drilled but needs some modifications to, to make it useful. That's upstream from this. This contract covers both of these. Okay, so should we anticipate if we need another roughly cost the same amount? For the, the future wells? Right. I would assume the cost would be lower because some of the engineering is already already in place. Okay. You know. Uh, okay, Mr. Whitmer, would you like to step forward? He's anxious back there. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Tom Whitmer. I'm the director of natural resources for the city. Uh, actually, we should only need one injection well for this for the uh, riverfront reclamation plant. Is all just one. Okay. The only way we did, we would need additional ones is if after we do the, the first one, we find out we can't inject at the, at the rate that we propose we can, we, or that we feel we can. Okay. That's the only way it'll, it'll require more than one injection well, because uh, as you know, the reclaimed water here will be used for basically two purposes. 
irrigate the athletic fields and the parks down the riverfront area. Mm -hmm. And then anything that's left over, we plan to put it back into the regional aquifer system. Okay. And can you explain, too, just for um, the, the benefit of the public, where the money is coming from to pay for this? Yeah. Um, the city, when we purchased the, the private water companies many years back, we also set up a water development fund. And that was intended to help develop future supplies. This would be considered a future supply because if we don't inject it, basically we lose it. We go into, evap into evap ponds, which eventually just will evaporate into the system. This way we're putting it back into the regional aquifer system and making it available for the city as well as other <coughs> individuals that have mm -hmm. private wells in, in the area here. So okay. it's like creating additional water for the system. Okay. Now right. for the Mingus Wastewater Treatment Plant, we do have our one injection well up there already. We do anticipate putting in three additionals up there. Okay. <laughs> That's where the three came from. So. Very good. And what, and what funds the Water Development Fund? Um, every month there is a, uh, uh, we assess each of our customers with a small, it's like 25 cents, I believe. Uh, it's got, all, of, all the fees are a total of about $5.42 per customer, and that's broken out into the, the different fees, right. okay. water development type mm -hmm. fees. And yeah, water development is just one of those things. And this is one of the things we have, we have not yet used other than what we used uh, for the, the injection well, the Mingus Wastewater Treatment Plant mm -hmm. up there. Okay. But we, for that one, we are actually getting refunded out of our CAP trust fund monies for that one. So we're getting reimbursed for the funds that we've already used out of that fund mm -hmm. for that injection well. Got it. And that injection well will take up the entire CAP trust fund monies. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, Council, what's your pleasure on this? I think it's also going to be a kind of a, I got to say it once, it's kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> it's just putting water back in. Mm -hmm. We've used water, putting it back in, we're returning it to the river, the aquifer, the, not the river, the aquifer, so it can be used again in the future. So it, it was anticipated cost. It's part of the overall development of the uh, treatment plant, so I think it's a great idea. Okay, so would anybody like to make a motion? Please. Make a motion. I move to award a professional service contract for engineering and design for an injection well and point of compliance well modifi modification to Pine View Consulting LLC in the amount not to exceed $142,000. Second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on under new business, the next item is uh, standardizing the meeting time and location of certain city boards and commissions and setting up c -mail, excuse, excuse me, city email addresses for board and commission members. So as you know, we discussed this um, at our work session last week. We got to hear from most all the, uh, the, the chairs of our various commissions, and um, I wanted to bring it back for a vote from the council to uh, decide how the council feels on this. And I did add another item too, which was to um, uh, set up city email addresses for board and commission members. Um, if you go to the city website currently, uh, it's very difficult to contact uh, the chairs or commission members of, of a lot of our commissions. And in my mind, that sets up just another uh, barrier to the public in engaging their um, representatives. So again, just the overview on this is, um, you know, one of the things I feel is very important is to make sure that um, what we do is very uh, transparent, very open to the public, um, and very uh, really forthcoming. And so I met with all the chairs of all of our commissions. I've certainly attended a lot of the commission meetings uh, last, last year particularly uh, with my campaign. Um, and I, th I think that we, we have a, a lot of commissions where the membership is waning. I think we could benefit from having these meetings be more public and uh, certainly uh, promote more of what our representatives are doing for us as, as a community. So that's really wanted, why I wanted to bring this forward. Um, and I would really entertain thoughts from the rest of the uh, council members on this. I do believe we have commission members and, and chair, uh, chairs here from our commission, so they're certainly all welcome to come up and speak. Council Member Allhouse. I was surprised to see this as an agenda item. I, we sat through the work session, and what I took away was several commissions were not interested in coming down here, having their meeting time moved to 6 o'clock. Um, 
and you, I can tell by the people that are in the audience that um, we're, we're going to have that probably that same conversation. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was very surprised to see it. I feel mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know how to say it, but I feel like you, you didn't listen mm -hmm. to what they were saying in, in the work session. Mm -hmm. um, I disagree with, with turning on lights, turning on air, turning on heat having staff members having to open and close and lock the doors mm -hmm. um, when the people don't want to be here and they're basically going to be sitting in this direction talking to an empty, empty room, which mm -hmm. is what they said they did. Um, Parks and Rec specifically said it um, for, I can't remember, maybe eight, ten years. They sat in here with, you know, maybe one visitor, mm -hmm. you know, during that time, and I think it was the Little League. Uh, I went back and read through the minutes um, this morning uh, again just to make sure and and I see the same thing so I'm honestly surprised that you're bringing this forward mm -hmm. okay it's my opinion okay any other council members I still think the library board if they wanted to meet at the library they should have that option and the same thing with the parks and rec mm -hmm. they meet at the rec center where all of the citizens use the facility mm -hmm. and that way they can have conversations if they have complaints or opinions but I think the rest of them pretty I think the there. email idea is is yeah. very good um, I think that if depending on, on what's decided if the website the new website has you know where these commissions meet where they meet and what time they meet and and they're consistent with that and that's the part that I think wasn't happening was being consistent mm -hmm. um, I think so long as it's consistent time and place and you know day or of the month then and it, that's on our website the public can attend um, but I, I did like the email idea and having that you know out on on the website but I just I disagree with us as council dictating to volunteers um, when and where they have to meet. Just just so you're aware, the, these commissions that they are appointed by council and they serve at our pleasure. I understand that, okay. but they're volunteers. Certainly, yeah. Councilmember Piper. I'm pretty much in agreement. Um, we heard a few co um, commission members say that if they did move the time and the place then possibly they wouldn't be able to serve and we have an awful hard time getting commission members so I'd hate to deter having the, the good members we have now by changing the time and the place. Councilor Mellon. Um, and I understand what it is you're looking for, I understand what the goal is mm -hmm. and I think possibly another great way to do that now we do, we do, um, we get the minutes and everything uh, from the commission members. I think it would be Excellent. I don't know. Maybe somebody can step up and tell me how often it's announced in the newspaper that this meeting is going to happen, and then kind of the outcome. Of course, we don't want to put the whole minutes in the newspaper, but to peak interest, you might be able to say, and they decided this, this meeting, or last meeting, and we're going to discuss this, and that might peak a little more interest mm -hmm. than having to go through a very dry agenda um, kind of thing if you use that newspaper as much as we can because people still read the newspaper too. No, they do indeed and that's uh, this is one one step in a series of steps that I you know want to present to council in, in ways to increase public engagement with the commissions that the council appoints and that work for the public so um, I think there's a lot of ways that we can increase involvement and hopefully increase um, you know participation and applications you know people to ap apply to serve on these boards and commissions but you know, my point is that th these council chambers are the recognized <coughs> meeting place for, you know, public meetings. And the more barriers we set up to public meetings, the more we, we, we run close to violating the open meeting law. And some of these meetings are held, you know, not behind one or two sets of doors, but sometimes three sets of doors. That's a barrier to the public in accessing the, uh, the public body that's doing their work. So that's really why I wanted to bring this forward to council. Uh, if, continue on mine just a moment. Sure. Tosca. Is is there anybody out there can let me know whether these these are announced in the newspaper on a regular basis or just a shake of heads or a nod, yes or no? Uh, it's, it's in the parks and rec thing that's put out every month. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm really sorry, but we, we won't be able to hear you um, unless you come up to the podium. At this point, this is part of the council discussion, so in a, in a minute I'll call you up to the podium, but please have a seat, thanks. So that's my question. Okay. 
How my understanding of how we had left this at the work session was that we were going to actually revisit it in an open meeting where we could take action and vote on this, you know, for or against. Mm -hmm. I appreciated the input from the chairs that attended and the the members, committee members, and board members that attended and shared their input. Frankly, several years ago when I um, applied to volunteer for the board of adjustment. Um, and I was reviewing the, the different boards, I was surprised to learn that our city boards um, and committees, some of them met outside of council chambers and that there were different meeting places and, you know, depending on the board. Um, I valued the input from Parks and Rec that it would, it's a deterrent to have to come down to city council. We also heard input that um, it's, uh, you know, nobody shows up at council chambers. But I think that uniformity is important. And just from my work um, representing several other non-municipal public entities, we do frequently stress the importance of same date, same or same you know, date and time every month, same meeting location to make sure that we're as transparent as possible for our public. I um, value the input. I recognize that we struggle for volunteers. But I do think that we, we have a duty to all of our constituents including those who serve on our boards, but we have a duty to let people know where they can expect to find meetings at what date and time on a regular, consistent basis. Thank you. Vice Mayor, did you want to share any thoughts? Uh, I understand what you're after, and, and I agree. Um, it'd be nice to have more participation. I, I think maybe at this time we need to shake things up a little bit simply because the way we've been doing it, obviously people haven't been going to the meetings and participating. So maybe it's time to do something a little different. And uh, this is just different. You know, we're still going to take care of the city's business, mm -hmm. uh, the locale, and, and, uh, and the times may change a little bit, but uh, it might not be a bad idea to reset the uh, meeting places and the times. Okay. All right. Well, I think the rest of the council knows how I feel about it. But you know, I will say that these are, um, again, these are these are commissions that serve at our pleasure. Um, we do we do appoint these commission members to represent the citizens and to uh, report back to council. What I'm really trying to do is to make sure that we have better communication with our boards and commissions, and I'll certainly continue to to work on that uh, through my tenure in office. Um, you know. We have to remember that we're serving the public, and so I understand that if we change the meeting time and location, it may be a hardship for some commission members, and it may be a hardship for some members as staff. But respectfully, it's the public that we serve, and what we really need to consider is how approachable and uh, transparent are we to the public, and that's really what what matters most to me, and that's really why I wanted to bring us forward to council. So um, we've all had an opportunity to speak. I would like to call up. Um, we have one one. Uh, uh, commissioner that's filled out a form. If there's anybody else that would like to speak tonight, there's forms in the back. You can fill those out um, in order to uh, address the council. Of course, you can always raise your hand and I'll call you up. Um, but we would like to get a form filled out. So I'm going to call up uh, Edna Ahrens, please. And please introduce yourself. Thank you. My name is Edna Ahrens. I'm just one of the, I'm one of the commissioners on the park and And I didn't mean to blurt out while ago. <laughs> It's, it's okay. Sorry about that. I'm a teacher, and things just come out in the classroom. No problem. <laughs> um, I, since last month, I've talked to a lot of different people that, about where the Parks and Rec Board meet. And everybody I talked to knew that it knows that it meets over at the Park and Rec building. And then that's where they would be more that that's where they would probably go because it's that's what it concerns i just think that we have a good facility over there there's more i i feel safer than i do i, I love old town and i want to move to old town but not i'm not comfortable out on the streets at night and so i just feel more comfortable down there and for me to have to go home and then come back makes it a real burden. Once I'm home, <laughs> like, I mean, I teach all day. Once I'm home, <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> so it's very hard to come back out. The 5 o'clock time has just been so convenient for me. And I love serving on the Parks and Rec Board. I've loved 
finding out all of the things that they have that they are involved in, things that I didn't know, and <laughs> and I think in that newsletter that comes out that they that's put out, I think it has the meeting time on that that it's for the parks, you know, when the Parks and Rec Board meets. We have our, our computers set up there with our screens, and if we have a large attendance, which we have at, at two or three things, they've met in the larger rooms right there in the Park and Rec building. And in fact, I think I attended one of the city things that was held over there because the room was so much bigger. Okay. Um, Very I just good. think it's more comfortable, so okay. thank you. Thank Sorry. you for your comments. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for being here tonight. I'd like to call up uh, Chairman Holtz, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. I pretty much discussed what I understood the position of the commissioners to be uh, during the work session. I would like to reiterate some of that real briefly. The purposes of our commission is uh, to interact with the community as a liaison for the council, for you folks, and uh, for the citizens, uh, a sounding board, if you will, for citizens to address their desires, their likes, their dislikes of how the city provides parks and recreation for their residents. Most of our contacts with the community occur either at the rec center where we have a lot of interaction with citizens and at the events that you as a council agree to put on for recreation for the city or for entertainment for the city and the community. This is where we gather our information. As I explained to you last time, I've been on the commission since 2000, the first nine years we met here. One time in nine years did we have anybody come to a commission meeting. When we built the rec center, we decided to move to the rec center simply because most of our activities were going to be at the rec center. And because when we're there, we have an opportunity to interact with the community that is interested in recreation in our uh, city because they're there. They're interacting with us. We also have the opportunity then to review the tennis courts, the outdoor swimming pool, and the rec center, which are our main uh, sources of <clears throat> resources for exercise, uh, swimming, uh, general family activities that we provide in the city. And it gives us an opportunity as commissioners to see what condition those uh, activity or pardon me, buildings and surfaces are in, how they're being treated. We are going to meet, uh, I think it's the 24th of this month, the fourth Tuesday. We are part of our agenda is to go over what was done during November, during what we call Hell Week, when we're down over Thanksgiving, <laughs> to go in and do major refurbishments, major repairs, and major improvements to the rec center. And this gives us as a commission an opportunity at our meeting then to go and view what we did so that when we come back to you, we can say, well, this is why we spent however many dollars we spent to improve the quality and continue to be an outstanding recreation center. If you bother to talk to people anywhere in northern Arizona, they will tell you this is the number one rec center in the northern Arizona, period. Far superior to Flagstaff. Ruben and I grew up in Flag. I'm sorry to say that we have a better rec center on one side, on the other side, I'm kind of proud that we accomplished what we did. Also, I have two commissioners. One, uh, I believe, just spoke to you, and the other one, uh, Ann Shaw, have informed me that they aren't going to be able to continue as commissioners if we change the location and the time. We already only have five. I believe we have six now that we had one that was uh, sworn in at the last commission meeting, or pardon me, council meeting. So we now have six. If I lose two, we're back down to four. That makes it very difficult to hold a commission meeting because quite often somebody has some kind of a conflict that interferes with their ability to come to a meeting. When we meet at the rec center, we don't have a parking problem. I was a little bit late tonight. I found the last parking lot or spot in the parking lot here. Uh, we're competing with parking for 
the rest of Old Town when we hold meetings here, and especially when we have seven people, when we have a full commission, plus three uh, members of the city board, or city, pardon me, Rock, Parks and Rec Commission here, sometimes four, now we're taking up a lot of parking spaces and there's no reason for it because nobody's here. I do understand uh, Ms. Henry's concern about being public. We can start holding the meetings in the conference or in the community rooms if that would be more advantageous. It's been my understanding, I think there's only been one occasion when I found the door locked going into the conference room at the rec center. We do publish in our, our quarterly magazine about the commission, about when we meet, and I would agree with the mayor, uh, and in fact, I discussed this with my wife before I came down tonight as our, we were coming home from Prescott. It needs to be put in the paper. Every one of the commissions, I'm out of time, right? No. Yeah, okay. you know what, I, I, did, I did fail to mention that there's a five minute time limit. And, I, oh. yeah. and Mr. Mayor, I think since this is a commissioner that's talking, I, I don't think this is probably, you would have the prerogative of not applying the rule you apply to public commenting on an item. Please finish up, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, my apologies. Uh, by publishing a short article in the paper every uh, month, prior, just after or just before each of the commission meetings, explaining what happened in that meeting, and also listing the time, date, and location that those meetings will occur will probably help enhance uh, community activity. But my community, as far as Parks and Rec are concerned, I know where they're going to be, and they know where we're going to be. It's, it's not like we're, we're secret or private. Uh, one of the drawbacks that I have seen, no offense to council or to anything in the city because I understand the financial situation. But when you think about our city government is spread out all over the city of Cottonwood. You can't go to one central location and talk to planning and zoning, talk to the water department, talk to uh, streets, talk to Parks and Rec, or anybody else because we're spread out all over the community. Our community understands that they can't just come to City Hall and talk to any department within the city and until such time as we're able to consolidate all of our city government into one building where people know there is one specific location to go for anything that you need in the city it's hard for me to understand why we want to split things up anymore or uh, not split things the way they are and continue to increase the interest in commissioners participating, as has been stated by some of uh, the council members, we don't have a lot of applicants. I can remember in years past when we would have <clears throat> an overabundance of people volunteering or requesting to be placed on Parks and Rec. We have gone almost a year, I believe it is, and we've attracted one out of three positions open. That's not very good track record for either the Parks and Rec Commission and Parks and Rec itself or for the city when we're having trouble and I read in the paper other commissions are, are continually seeking participants. And, and I do understand, Mayor, your desire to put everything together in one location and I believe when we have a, a real complete city hall like you would find in most cities where all of the city operations are within one set of buildings or building, mm -hmm. what you're recommending and suggesting would be a, a very positive thing to do. But when everybody is spread out, mm -hmm. it's, it's real hard, uh, and especially Thank in our situation. Thank you. I want to give everyone else an opportunity to speak. Thanks for being here, Chairman Holst. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, quickly, I'm going to read, I got an email from Margot Mitchell, I contacted her earlier. Margot Mitchell is the chair of the library uh, commission, so I'm going to go ahead and read what she uh, uh, wrote earlier. So she says, although the library advisory board would be willing to change place, date, and time for their meetings, it would certainly be more convenient if we could continue to meet at the library. The current meeting place allows the heads of the library's youth services and adult services to attend the meetings and to give us in-person reports as to what is happening in their areas of responsibility, since our meetings currently begin at 4.30 during work hours. 
moving to the council chambers, we remove these staff members from our monthly meeting and would lessen the strong line of communication that the board currently shares with them, the staff. Um, so that's from uh, the, uh, the chair of the Library Commission. Okay, so I'm going to call uh, Chairman Mone up to the podium, please. And again, if anyone else would like to address the council, please fill out a form. Please, uh, Mr. Mone, introduce yourself. Thank you. Mayor Alinsky, esteemed council members, uh, Jim Mone, I'm chairman of the Airport Commission. Uh, my comments on this, uh, a, a little history, the Airport Commission has met in various places around the uh, city. Sometimes we will have no audience, sometimes we've got a full house. It just depends on what's on our agenda. Uh, I would like to suggest to council that you allow the individual commissions to set their meeting, own meeting place and meeting time, and then we stick to it uh, to maintain a continuity and as much transparency as we can for our, our citizenry. Okay. Very good. That's all I've got to say. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to address the council? Mrs. Ward, would you care to come forward? And please introduce yourself. Good evening, Council. I'm Vanessa Ward. I'm the library manager. I totally understand where you're coming from, but the suggestion to me, it would be something more like baby steps like us getting it in the paper. When I was reading the minutes, I understood, yes, we had our door closed and locked. So if we have start out with signage out, you know, the door would be closed because it's a meeting. But if there's an arrow pointing to it, I think the commissions need to start with making themselves more available mm -hmm. to the public. And then if that doesn't work, then try something else. Okay. I would just encourage staff members that if it's, if it's a public meeting and the door is closed, then you can't call it a public meeting. That's, this is my opinion, well, but... It, our our you're, you're problem in our library is you were in our meeting room. Mm -hmm. It's too small. Right. That's a whole other issue, but I mean, right. it, it is what it is. Right. So, you know, future plans, I would like to rearrange a room in the library. Then that right. could be open. I understand. But that's, that's just that I, I understood and got it that there were things that we could be doing differently mm -hmm. to promote our meeting. Because right. no, we are one that does not have it in the newspaper. Right. And no, it's and I, posted yeah. here, it is posted at City Hall. Another suggestion I have would be with the new Facebook page, I mean, excuse mm -hmm. me, the city web page, mm -hmm. that if going to our, for the commissions, they're under a whole nother tab and the council's under one tab. If those were combined, and maybe you don't need 15 months of agenda and minutes, mm -hmm. you know, the current two, if it was all in one spot where people, the public could see it, mm -hmm. that might garner attention also. Right, okay. That's it. Very good, okay. thank you, appreciate it. Mr. Rodriguez. Mayor, might have, might have, might have, and I was going through our, our website on the Board and Commission's mm -hmm. uh, pull-down menu, and I noticed that uh, most of the Board and Commissions don't have locations and times when they meet. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, they have the advisory, either the members of the Board, but they don't have an uh, email address or some sort of contact information. Um, if the Council wishes to at least experiment with it as I can go back through the, the current web page and, and eventually on the new web page and put the locations and times that these boards meet and get emails and phone numbers for each and every one of them. And that may be a start to be able to make sure that people are able to contact and know exactly when these meetings happen. Um, and, then, and then if that doesn't work, then we can always revisit it again. But I think, uh, you know, having them in different locations, the library at the library, the parts of rec at the rec, Center is, is my view is is a good idea. The problem is that we don't have a way for people. People don't know where they're happening, mm -hmm. and don't know when they're happening, and don't know who to contact. And I think that's one thing we need to probably correct is locations, times of, of the regular meetings, and then of course who can they contact with these people? There's a lot of people here that 
I don't even know how to contact them if I needed to. So, <coughs> right. No, um, they're just a suggestion. No, and that's good, and I appreciate that. And there are many, many things that we could do, many ways we can improve on making sure that our public bodies are more accessible to the public. And certainly, I appreciate you know taking baby steps, and that's really what I'm attempting to do here. So, I believe we have another member, uh, Commissioner Gottschalk. Please stand up and introduce yourself. So, uh, my name is Trevor Gottschalk, Parks and Rec Commissioner. Um, I definitely um, feel that there should be some sort of standardization and more transparency. Um, I, you know, hearing uh, hearing what uh, Commissioner or Chairperson Hulse has to say, and I, there's all valid points as reasons to keep it in one place. I think there might be a good middle ground, and that's I, someone's idea of moving it to a one of the. Uh, Sorry, one of the larger rooms that is available to everyone else. I think it would be my first time as a commissioner, having never been back in the offices, that might be a discouraging factor to people and coming to that meeting. They don't realize they're allowed to go back to where they're usually not allowed to go back to. So um, as baby steps, we've been saying move it to a community room with signage that, so people know as they're coming in. Um, as a commission, we have not discussed this, and that's probably due to the fact that we don't meet in December, so we haven't had a meeting since the last meeting where this was discussed and um, I'm hoping that we will continue to discuss that I, I do feel what uh, Councilperson Henry said is you know we might lose some but th there's also the possibility that based on where we meet and when we meet is also discouraging to a larger group of population so it would be hard to change it and lose some but by doing it at five o'clock which is when people get off work they might feel as they're not able to make that commitment where if it was a little later you open yourself up to you know more of the working class people that want to um, also contribute but wouldn't be able to make that meeting. So I think there's lots of room for happy medium and for people to um, increase the attendance at these meetings and I think that's the real goal and I, I'm anything that I think that we can do to increase public participation and uh, events that meeting I'm, I'm all for it. Um, one last thing is and I do feel that the Parks and Rec Commission meetings themselves are very much recreation center specific which you know and we said that's when most of, that's where most of the things go on for the parks and rec department. I tend to disagree. We have a lot of city parks. We have a lot of large events, and you know even if you look through our uh, roles and duties in our parks and rec packet, there's no mention of real special events and programs. And I think maybe when the parks and rec uh, commission was formed, we didn't do as many large events. But our input to the large events is, I mean, so we usually get a rundown on it, but we're never really asked for you know whether it's tilted earth those kind of things. So I think there could be even more more involvement there and if we do need a body that is specifically to the parks and rec center since it is such a large facility we might want to consider having a committee that meets and reviews the bills for the parks and rec center but then also have a parks and recreation commission that reviews all the events i would say with as much emphasis as we put on the parks and rec center itself okay That's very good thank, thank you. you for your comments appreciate it and mayor linsky if i yes, may please. just i have concerns um and that um Commissioner Gottschalk just hit on that exactly. We heard very eloquently from Chairman Hulse that he interacts with the public, but he started off his uh, address saying, we interact with the community. He didn't say we interact with just the members of the, of the rec center, but that's essentially what is happening. We're having meetings behind closed doors that maybe draw some attention from members of the rec center, but the Parks and Recs Commission is here to offer an opinion and to help out on items such as Thunder Valley Rally, our Daddy Daughter Night, or our Easter Egg Hunt, there are and all of the other parks in our area. And what we've heard tonight is criticism that the city is spread out and, and people don't really know where to go for the different departments, but yet we also hear and from that same speaker that we need to propagate that. We need to leave that uh, and let boards um, and, and commissions decide their own locations or have their own different locations. What we're trying to do here as a new council is move forward in the direction of uniformity. That goal of one day having a, a gorgeous city hall that has everybody housed in one location. And this is how we get there. And it takes its growing pains. It takes growth. And I had the pleasure of serving with uh, Commissioner Hulse's wife on the Board of Adjustment, and we met at the Rec Center, and we never had a single member of the public attend any of our meetings. And I, I don't attribute that to the location, but that the, we, we failed to publish. We didn't have the, um, the information posted on the website. So 
Um, I, I, again, strongly uh, feel that we do need to move in this direction of uniformity and everybody meeting at the same point and being available to all of our constituents, not just members of the rec center or people, patrons of the library who know that that's where, um, you know, where the meeting will be held. Another concern, as a public body, we should never be holding a public meeting in a location that is too small for members of the public to join. And that's also of concern tonight. We said, well, please let us meet at the library, but yet we don't have room for the public. And again, I strongly urge uh, you know, my fellow city council members to you know, make a difficult decision. Thank you. Council Member Allen. Comment, as, as far as the library, it's a small room, but it accommodates the public. I've been to that meeting, I've been a part of that board. It will accommodate the public if it's necessary. I think what we're doing here is we're already taking a challenged commission, ca challenged commissions, and what we need to do is, quote, better advertising. Just pulling them into the same room is not going to get any better response or any worse response. Unless the public knows where they are, that's what needs to happen. And I think the advertising, the putting it in the newspaper, the putting it on our website mm -hmm. is the baby step we need to take until we have full commissions that are not going to be handicapped by the fact that we want the convenience of putting them here for the public, the public will know if we advertise properly, if we put the information out there, they're going to know. And we need to accommodate, yes, they serve at our pleasure, but we don't want to totally strip a commission because we want to move them either. I think that's inappropriate. So again, that's my thoughts on it. It's let's take the baby steps, let's do something that we should have been doing all along, is getting those sites listed, getting it on our website, getting it in the newspaper, because that's where 99% of the time people are going to get it. Okay, very good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to propose a motion, see if we get a second, then I want a, a, a vote by roll call from the deputy clerk. So I'm going to move that we um, move the following boards, city boards and commissions to meet in the council chambers building at 6 p.m on the normal calendar meeting day. This would include the Airport Commission, the Historic Preservation Commission, the Library Board, Parks and Rec Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, and the Youth Advisory Commission, and to establish city, city email addresses for board and commission members. Is that your motion? That's my motion. I'll second that motion. Deputy Clerk, please take a roll call vote. Councilmember Althaus? Nay. Councilmember Norman? Nay. Councilmember Pfeiffer? Nay. Councilmember Allen? Nay. Councilmember Henry? Aye. Uh, Vice Mayor Haroghi? Aye. And Mayor Alinsky? Aye. Okay, so the motion dies. So is there any further discussion from Council? I think we should revisit this issue, and that is in the lines of the baby steps at some point in the future to see if we do have staff taking the additional um, action that was discussed tonight, such as making sure we do clearly post the meeting dates and times and locations on our website, um, and then also publishing in the newspaper. And then if that is having a desired effect, I think we should uh, assess at a later time. Certainly, thank and, you. And I would add um, uh, the email. I think the email is, is a very good idea to have um, their, their personal email or, you know, out so people can get in contact, especially with the commissioners, I think. That's important. So this is then just direction that we're going to give staff, and I would expect staff to follow through with right. that, unless we need a, a motion to. No, I, let me let me just get that. Uh, establish their locations and their regular meeting times, not necessarily a special meeting time, but the regular meeting times at those locations, and I will get email addresses and phone numbers if, for those that are available, because some obviously don't want to release their phone number, but. If they have email that we can go ahead and obtain, we'll go ahead and put it up on our, on our, on our city website to ensure that they are able to be contacted. Okay, so I had a, when I was a council member, I had my, the, the addresses, I had a city email address, and I had those addresses, those emails forwarded to my, my personal um, email address so that no one, no member of the public had access to my personal email account, but they could access me through the city. So I would, I would recommend that all commissioners, chairmen and commissioners, get a city um, uh, issued email address. And okay. if they choose to have that forwarded to their personal address, then great. But we, we need to make sure that we, that we don't keep putting up barriers to accessing the public bodies that serve the citizens <coughs> of Cottonwood. So you want them with, with Cottonwood? Great Wood AZ addresses. Do you, do you want a motion to, all, to, uh, to this effect, or is this clear enough direction? 
Mr. Mayor, I think that would be the council's prerogative. Okay. I, I think the direction's clear enough. Okay, great. I want to thank all the all the chairmen that showed up, all the all the commissioners that showed up and, and took part in this conversation. I appreciate it very much. You know, Edna, <coughs> we're done with that. Thank you very much. Well, Thanks for being here. So you mentioned um, just please please come up to the podium then Mrs. Aarons and, and address the council. Thanks. Sorry. That's okay. You had mentioned you mentioned early on about um, if we had if you had my email address you could send me information. Is that what I understood when you were first talking about? So the discussion was about setting up a city-issued email address for that, all. That was, but I mean, when we first began the meeting um, about getting to know what was going on, that you would send it out to individuals if they, if you had their email address. Are Did you I talking about the newsletter that I reported mm -hmm. on? Yes, I do have a newsletter. That's right. Yes. So how do we get on that list to receive So if, that? if you would like to send me an email with your email address, I would add you to my newsletter. It's on that piece of paper. I'd love for you to do it. Okay. Well, okay. this piece of paper I have to give back to the, the clerk uh, oh, this okay. evening. So if you uh, would just I'll contact I'll do that. Thank me. you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ahrens. I appreciate it. Okay. Moving on. Uh, the next item is claims and adjustments. I move we pay the claims and adjustments. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So the motion passes. Very good. So next um, item, item 10. Pursuant to Arizona Revised Statutes, uh, the City Council may vote to convene an executive session to consult with its attorneys to receive legal advice and to provide direction regarding the Vineyards Development Agreement. And then item 11. Um, is uh, the city versus GRL Inc. proposed settlement pursuant to Arizona Revised Statutes. Again, uh, the council may vote to convene an executive session in order to receive legal advice to consider its position and or to instruct its attorneys in this matter. So, Council Member Henry, would you like to... I forget how this Mr. is Mr. Mayor, that, to be. that's fine. This is a complicated, uh, just for the record, the, the council doesn't often go into executive session. It very, very rarely goes into more than one. Uh, the, the matter is further complicated by I think we have a council member who's going to declare a conflict in, in one matter that will be subject to one of the executive session discussions as well as possible legal action afterwards. So that's, um, that's why this, this one's a little bit convoluted. But with that, I think you wanted maybe to recognize Councilwoman Henry. Certainly. Thank you. Mayor Linsky, I do declare a conflict as to the item number 11, and um, I'll recuse myself um, from the executive session as well as from the vote. Okay, Thank very you. well. So what the council should do, we'll make a motion to convene into executive session and then discuss one of the items. Council Member Henry, then would that uh, step out? Okay, very good. So is there, a, I'm, I move to a convene an executive session? A second. Okay, motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And for members of the public, it's not probably worth sticking around, but you're more than welcome to. Should be out in about a half an hour or so. to convene back into regular session. Second. The motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we are back in regular session. Um, again, the item that we're discussing is uh, City versus GRL Inc. A proposed settlement. So we had a robust conversation and um, I believe we're ready for a motion. Make a motion. Please. Oh, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could just uh, uh, remind, for the record, uh, Ms. Henry has, has declared conflict on this matter and, and has recused, just as a, as a matter of optics. If, well, you, you can stay at the dais, but I think uh, most council members who declare conflict then step off the dais. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you uh, for that. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I was too late. Sorry. It's, it's new. It's okay. 
So and, and Councilmember like Henry has to, declared a conflict. Thank just you. Just briefly um, describe the matter you're, you're voting on, or do you just want to? No, please, yeah, absolutely, for the public. Uh, uh, this is a, a matter that, that's currently in arbitration, Mr. Mayor and Council, and, and it was, uh, it, it's an airport hangar site lease matter, uh, and uh, the parties had a, a disagreement over the, the rent due and when, when rental payments accrued. Uh, they, they couldn't reach an agreement in mediation. The city invoked the arbitration provision in the lease, and the parties are, are currently in arbitration that's pending, although um, at the first deposition scheduled in this matter, the parties reached a tentative settlement that uh, was put on the record uh, by uh, the court reporter who was attending that deposition, and the staff recommendation is to accept that uh, settlement, which will result in, in recoupment of approximately or, or payment to the city of approximately $82,000 um, in, in respect of whatever I think we want to consider it in respect of, but it will make the city whole in terms of the, the rent that was due as well as the attorney's fees uh, that the city has expended in uh, pursuing this matter. Very good. Okay. I move to approve the proposed settlement of the airport hangar site lease dispute with GRL Incorporated as documented in the court reporter's transcript dated December 20th, 2016. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, so the motion passes. I'm pleased that we've settled this. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Henry, come on back. Thank you. So the next item is adjournment. I move that we adjourn. <laughs> okay, motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.